Okay, hello class. Welcome to uh, Big Bang Data Science Solution, the uh, Ramadan program. Uh, this is actually supposed to be a Ramadan, about one month or almost one month ahead. So this is a 10-week program, a free program in data science, artificial intelligence, in exchange for a donation to a church, to a masjid, to a non-profit organization, to a family in need. So please donate and share your um, your information, share your donation receipt, and we will train you. The value of this program is um, 1500 1500 but we are offering it for free to help the community uh, because we believe in data science, and we believe data science is the future. So it's a 10-week program. Uh, we will be um, most likely doing it once a week, but probably we might do it twice a week because we want to finish it as, as soon as possible. So we will see, uh, starting from next week, probably we could do it twice a week. So this is me and uh, my partners, Mami Dwani, uh, Ed Bujak, and I have Shokat Khan, Nooman Hussein, and Fatima Ali. So we have a team. And uh, Big Bang Dara Science Solution is... Uh, uh, a training uh, provider center based in Atlanta, Georgia. We do training and uh, in data science, artificial intelligence, analytics in general. We do consulting, contracting, and job placement. And this is the, the, the curriculum for the 10 week program. And the first week, which is today, we are going to learn why do we need to uh, become a data scientist? What's so big about data science? Why do I need to invest? You now, what is the roadmap of uh, if uh, what, what is the ultimate roadmap to become um, a scientist? So we are going to learn all about this. And um, next session or next week, then we are going to learn. We are going to dive you know, straight and to the point. We are going to learn the first phase of the analytical project. So the program itself, the standard program itself, is how to conduct an analytical project end to end using Python, from concept to completion using Python. So the first phase of this project is called business understanding or data understanding. So we are going to learn a few things that needs to be um, completed in the early stage, in early phase of the CRISPR-DM. Sorry guys, so yeah, I know I was not maybe uh, sharing my screen, my apologies. So I requested from you guys, if you can see my screen, that you you, um, you confirm, that's why. Uh, yes, you can see that. See again. Okay, can you see it guys, can you guys see it now? Yes. yes. Good. Yes. Okay. So, um, yes. so I started by introducing the team very quick: Mami Duani, Ed Bujak, and Shokat Khan, Norman Hussein, and Fatima Ali. And um, this is the program. The first week is going to be: Why should you become a data scientist, or why should I learn data science? And uh, in this uh, today, we are going to talk about data explosion. What is data science? Uh, why data science? type of analytics, we'll talk about the data science portfolio, the data science process, and career in data science if I want to become a data scientist. Then in week number two, we are going to talk about the first phase of the, uh, the analytical project, and that is um, business analytics and business understanding. Uh, there is a lot to cover, but I doubt we are going to have the time to cover this. This is three sessions altogether. I will try to uh, simply touch base the most important things that you should know uh, as a data analyst slash data scientist. Then because we are going to be using Python and my apologies, because we'll be using Python and probably most of you guys uh, don't have any uh, Python background. So we are going to do one session a simply crash course. Um, Python crash course or introduction to Python. We are not going to learn Python. And we are going to learn basic things about Python for data science. 
So we are going to talk about the, the most common libraries. We are going to simply try to uh, have a clear overview of what is Python and how we can utilize it for our journey. Then we are going to move in week number four. We are, we are going to move into um, phase number two in the analytical project um, project. And that is data understanding and exploring your data. This is a lot of fun, by the way. And of course, there's a lot to cover, but again, this is we are not going to cover all of this. But I'll, I'll try to provide as much information as possible. Then in week number six, we are going to move into phase number three, uh, phase number three of the analytical for the analytical projects. So we will be learning how to prepare process and transform the data and make the data ready for the analysis. And as you see, there's a lot to cover. And um, of course, we'll do our best to cover as much as we can. Then in week number eight, then we are going to move into the most um, exciting part of this um, journey, and that is um, machine learning. So we are going to learn um, how to design programs who can make decisions on our behalf, who can help us make a better decisions based on their decisions. So we are going to learn supervised learning and we are going to do classification part one. In classification, we are going to learn that the base, we are going to learn decision tree, we are going to learn uh, it's basic, uh, you know, classical algorithms that we are going to learn. Best Someone must teacher, you know, best. Guys, uh, please meet yourself. Everybody, please meet yourself. Otherwise, I am going to dismiss you. I'm going to kick you out of the room. If you don't want to dismiss yourself, if you don't want to be dismissed, please meet yourself. And thank you so much for understanding. So in week number eight, we are going to move into machine learning. And we are going to learn probably five, six classical algorithms. Then um, we'll continue the same journey in week number nine. And in week number 10, we are going to learn how to deploy a model into a production and uh, we will be using flask so this is a journey uh, this is what you'll be covering uh, it's a lot to cover and uh, as a matter of fact this is part of the program that i teach online yeah i have um, alhamdulillah um, one program that i designed for the last six six years and this program has been acquired by two universities so far it's one of the best training program that you get to get in the market. It's five times a week, three hours per session for eight months. It's learning data science from zero to hero. Uh, you know, with with and in this program you learn R, you learn Python, you learn Tableau, Power BI, you learn machine learning, NLP, deep learning big data you learn analytics you learn so many things it's actually three masters together from you from three universities u.s universities plus uh, almost 10 years of experience so that is the plan for tonight and uh, for the remaining um, 10 weeks so before I start, um, I would love to invite two brothers who were participating in organizing this. Uh, Brother Azad, are you here? Azad, if you would please uh, unmute yourself and simply welcome your um, the students. Thank you and assalamu alaikum to everybody. And welcome students. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, Brother Mo uh, has done a great job at offering this. and. Uh, we thank him and, of course, thank uh, our Allah so that, uh, you know, he can guide us better. And uh, thank you, Brother uh, Mo. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, Brother Asad. All thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made this easy for us. I did not do anything. Simply, um, I'm sharing my humble knowledge. 
but these are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from me. And uh, Brother Mushi, if you are here, would you please uh, unmute yourself and uh, simply invite or welcome your students? Hi, everyone. I know that I wanted to thank people who you joined with us. I want to thank that Asad and the whole organization at the end that when they opened the door with us, just wanted to let other people know that I have sent you an email, told you that this is a program that organized by another or organization. We are just coming at last minute. And then as uh, that uh, Mo, brother Mo, Mo, Mo Diani just opened the door to us. So just understand here we have Muslim and non-Muslim. Those I know that we have a lot of non-Muslims members in the group. Just understand that since UFA is a non-profit organization where we serve, serve regardless who whatever you believe in, we serve everyone. So just be respectful. Although, you know, program was designed for Muslim people, but Muslim, we are all here believe in one thing that, you know, we do not harm one another and we all love food. <laughs> so Urban Food Alliance, a food bank, it serves food, food for everybody. So just be mindful. The others just don't be... We don't get uncomfortable with the topic that when we say assalamu alaikum means peace be upon you and alhamdulillah means mean we thank to god to so, so and so just i would appreciate if you guys be mindful of that one but in future we'll organize better that way that we doesn't confuse this this kind of thing sure. thank you for your understanding back to you and uh, thank you for bringing that up you know um, yes um... Um, we welcome everybody. Actually, this program is open uh, to anyone. You can you can um, donate to a masjid, to a church, to a, a temple, to a nonprofit organization. I really don't care to whom you are uh, participate or donating or participating with. I really don't care about that. As far as you want to learn, you donate. Uh, please uh, join, and we will train you. And I'm going to train you for free. I don't have any uh, problem being a Muslim or non-Muslim. We are one nation. We live in this and we are all humans. Of course, we are have our politics, our beliefs. That is put it behind. So we are one family now and we will be driving together for eight weeks. So, uh, okay. So um, you guys, you uh, most of you uh, are aware of the uh, the canvas. So this is the program, uh, the platform we'll be using through the program. And this platform uh, will be, uh, is designed to host our um, training program, our recording, train materials, assignments, if any. So if you have not, if you have not received an invite to uh, join the Canvas yet, there are two possibilities, either I don't have your email yet, number one, or I have your, uh, there are three possibilities. Either I don't have your email yet, or I have your email and we sent you an invite and somehow we got lost, either it went to junk mail or it never reached you. The third option is you registered with, uh, with uh, an, an incorrect email. So if you don't uh, if you don't have uh, your email please reach out to me or reach out to brother asad or moshi and reach out to them with your email and name and uh, i will be more than happy to add you tonight otherwise uh, please reach out to me directly uh, probably you have my number in my whatsapp and i will be more than happy to address any concern that you have so this is the program uh, so once you get an invite you should be able to accept the invite and uh, you are not going to see all these programs. This is um, uh, the pro other programs that we offer. But so far we are offering two programs free. We are offering the analytical project from concept to completion, which is this program. And I'm offering the same project by an Arabic language. So if you speak Arabic, you want to uh, join Arabic, um, it could be better. And in this Arabic program, we have more than 3,500 participants from all over the world, 3,500. So uh, once you accept the invite, you are going to see um, the, this pro program. Just click on it. 
click on it and uh, you are not going to see what i see because i'm an admin but this is what i'm expecting you to see so i'm expecting you see to, uh, to see the uh yeah sorry guys i'm expecting you to see home and modules So yes, home and modules. So if you click on modules, please click uh, those who have uh, accessed the uh, canvas um, already, please click on modules. And it is gonna take you to many things. It's gonna take you to a program orientation. So here you are gonna be, um, you will be introduced to, um, uh, to the course um, leaders which is me, then you will be, you will have a lot of information on the program. Yeah, how to install Jupyter Notebook. This is the platform we'll be using for, um, for the program. Yeah, how to um, navigate through the, the system, how to create a profile. And also, this is very important, you need to introduce yourself. Please introduce yourself, who you are. Uh, I really, all I need to know about you is your technical background, how familiar we are. And I simply need to know what we have in class. So to help me manage accordingly, I need to know if I'm going too fast or I need to go into details or simply surface the, uh, the concept and move on. So knowing your background will help me in, in, in a lot to determine the, the, the optimal approach in training you in driving through this uh, entire program so this is a sequential program it simply means you are not going to see week number one unless you complete we, uh, the orientation and the only thing that you need to complete in, in the orientation is review everything and you need to introduce yourself it says here contribute means you have to say something about yourself view simply just click take a look and move every week every week you are going to get at least two things every week you are going to get access to two things number one you are going to have access to training materials pdf powerpoint if any and codes if any and also uh, the uh, documents or books, if any. Then you are gonna have access to the recording. Every week you are gonna have access to the recording. And of course you are gonna have access to the uh, discussion board. This is an area where uh, you are welcome to express yourself and share your concerns, share thoughts, you know, just uh, let us know how we can help you better. It's a free program, yes, but still you are required to put some effort and also you are required to utilize me, use me as much as you can. Don't hesitate to share your concern, contact me, call me. I really don't have any problem supporting any, everyone, and each and every one of you. I don't have any problem doing that. So um, those who need a certificate, now, of course, if you need a certificate, we can provide that. But unfortunately, certificates cost the business a lot of money, cost us a lot of money. And these certificates, they are um, provided through a third party called CV Trust. Yeah, this is a company based and um, we do training and uh, we initiate the certificate and you'll get the certificate through this uh, company it's a verified certified uh, certificates and this is how much it's going to cost us they are not free unfortunately it's they cost almost uh, 15 and 16 1700 uh, euro uh, per year so with our with are the prices so if you need the certificates talk to us and we will help you I'm looking for uh, any kind, looking for for, for the uh, prices, here we are, pricing. 
so just 500 is uh, 570, 575 euro per year, and um, premium is 17. Uh, turbo is 28,000. It's almost 3,500 uh, US dollar per year, just year so for one license. So that's why we uh, we don't offer the certificates uh, for free. But if you need certificate, uh, we are going to charge you at least. Uh, $50, but uh, it's not about money. Uh, you have to earn it, and to earn it, we are going to apply. We are going to give you an exam, and we are going to give you a capstone project. Um, this program is the, I mean, will help you to, to run your first capstone project, and of course, we are going to supervise you. We are going to help you, guide you through, and we are going to you know, simply. Uh, uh, push you hard and with our guidance, uh, uh, the steps need, needed to complete this capstone project. So if you are interested, we can do that. Otherwise, you get you get the training, should be enough. You don't have to use, you don't have to get the, cert the certificate. Okay, so any question, concern, please, before we proceed with the, tonight's topic. Yeah, please un, un, unmute yourself, everybody. Please go ahead and unmute yourself, and feel free to ask your questions. Uh, Brother Mo, assalamu alaikum. Do we have to enroll now for the certificate? I'm sorry? Do we have to enroll now for the certificate? Uh, you need to enroll simply to have access to the canvas. Okay. And if you need certificate, yes, you need to be in the canvas first. And through the canvas, we are going to sign towards the end of the program. Those who are um, interested in the certificates, we are going to give you a final exam. And of course, we are going to give you um, a capstone project, a real, it's a real capstone project, something that you should really invest effort wise and something that you should list in your resume. <laughs> Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Um, you are very uh, too far from the mic. Uh, now, can you hear me, Brother Mo? Yeah, it's better, yes. Okay. Uh, I have started downloading the Anaconda 3 2021, but it's taking a bit of time. Is it usual yeah. or uh, do I restart it again? Yeah, yeah this is a technical problem. Yeah, just send me after class, then I'll help you. Okay, thank you, Jazakallah. You're welcome. Okay, Asad, please mute yourself unless you have a question. Mr. Asad, Brother Asad Zaki. Yes, I'm uh, I'm here. Please go ahead. Yeah, please mute yourself unless you have a question. Oh, sorry. Here, uh, Brother Moses Zulfikar. Yes, sir. Is it, is it mandatory that all the installation to be done to before we start or is it okay? Uh, we are going to need, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, we are going to need the, uh, Anaconda by next session, which is going to be sometimes next week. Great, yeah, thank you. So actually, people... actually, actually, my apology, Azkur is going to be in the third session. So you got three, you got two more sessions. Yeah, you don't have to do it tonight. But I'm willing to spare some time, sometimes after the, the session, the night session, to help you guys with any technical research that you may have. Okay, other questions, concerns, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, how long uh, do we have access to those recordings? Only for eight weeks, or it's. Uh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's going to cost uh, cost us some, some space, and but I'm going to make it lifetime. Okay. It's going to be lifetime. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. Uh, brother Mo, one more quick question. Uh, as I go in the Canvas dashboard, I see. Uh, brother one, Muhammad, uh, you are too far from the mic. I barely hear you. Okay, let me. Okay, anyone else, please? Any questions? No, questions please? Still, still the same. I barely hear you. Mo. Yes, yes, Shams. Okay, so th th this is the uh, how many days? It's going to be are... 10 weeks. It could be 10 days. It could be five days. 
10 days five, no no per week how many days it's going to be uh it's going to be one day it's going to be uh three hours per week if three we hours per week it, if we were to do it uh, twice a week it's going to be six hours a week but in in total it is going to be between 30 and 45 no, hours three hours and then uh, what day friday uh, so far, we are doing it Friday, but next week uh, we could, we could do it Friday and Saturday. We we don't know yet, but the the, uh, what, what, the agenda what time comes to eight eight to eleven Friday and Saturday same time. Most likely, if you are doing it on Friday, it is going to be eight to eleven. If you are doing it on Saturday, it is going to be daytime. No night, no daytime. Yeah, and I will notify you ahead of time of any change that we are planning to do. Assalamu oh, alaikum. Uh, are we planning to change the timing during Ramadan? Uh, hopefully we are going to finish the program before Ramadan. Okay, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah, Assalamu alaikum, uh, brother. Uh, I have a question. I'm trying to open the canvas, you know, the today, but you know, the they're asking the QR code. So, if How you to are scan trying that to open the invite from the phone, is you are going to get that problem. Try to open the, the invite using your laptop. Okay? Okay, folks. So now let's uh, move into the lecture. And tonight we'll talk about the... Uh... Uh, so, sorry, one more. Sure. Sorry, one more question, uh, Brother Mo. This Riaz. Um, so I have not got... Um, um, the details to log into the canvas is it in the invite itself um yeah it should be if you get the invite it's about the, the the canvas if you have not received the invite either you are not providing your email or your email is incorrect or the invite went to junk mail okay yeah i have not provided the email that, that's so it no, then, um, please provide that uh, are you registering through Brother Asad Zaki or Brother Moshi? Anyway, let's talk. To, let's uh, take this offline. Okay, more one more. Sure. So I have a canvas. So I I not invite again, right? No, uh, you have to be invited again. I invite you. So so you, you sent email or sent to. I will send you an email after the, uh, the session tonight. Okay, thanks. Okay, folks, so we'll come to um, Big Bang Data Science Solutions, uh, the free program. And uh, tonight we'll talk about why, why I should learn data science. So um, this is me. Uh, my name is Muhammad Midwani and I go by Mo Midwani. You could, you, you could call me Muhammad, uh, Mo, Midwani, Mahmoud, I don't have any problem. I have, a, I am a PhD candidate and I'm doing a PhD in artificial intelligence with a concentration on NLP. I have four masters. I have a masters in machine learning, masters in data science, masters in IT and an MBA. I have over 20 years of experience in IT, service delivery management nine years plus in the uh, data science and related technologies. I am the founder of Big Bang Data Science Solutions, founder of Arabitics, founder of Africalytics, and founder of Torquea, Torquelatics. So there are four, you know, four, uh, four um, you know, centers, training centers across the globe, one in Africa for Africans, one for Arabs, one for Tur Turkish, and there is another one we just started. It's in the uh, Hawaii. Uh, and the top of that, we are doing found. Uh, we are doing Big Bang Data Science Solution, which is the the, the parent, or the the, the parent uh, company. So we are in the business since 2016. And I have a beautiful story that uh, I would love to share with you guys to motivate you to uh, push hard and learn data science. Uh, prior September of 2014, prior this date, I have no clue. I never even heard about anything called data science or anything called machine learning or any technologies. I did not know anything about Python, about R, 
I was not a programmer. I was not a statistician. I was not a mathematician. I used to work for a big company at the time, good money for the family. And I was very happy. And I joined this company for almost five years. And my title were, was service delivery analyst. So this is my title, service delivery manager slash analyst. And my job or my responsibilities were incident management, change management, problem management, and all this type of management. So I was the liaison between IT and the business. My responsibility is to make sure that all applications infrastructure are up and running 24 7. so that was my life for almost five years and until one day hr changed my title from service delivery analyst to data analyst without any notification so at the time i was transferred from one department to a different department within the same organization and at the time they uh, they hired the company hired a new it director it's not my direct manager but the manager of my manager so this it director she is a, a female um, probably she was um, as described by many employees she was a police officer she simply started by trying to fix whatever she could to demonstrate to the business that she was a good fit for the position. So she picked at me and she signed a project to me based on the title she had in front of her, that is data analyst. Mom Edwani is a data analyst, but I never was a data analyst. I was a service delivery analyst. And these are two different animals. So back in July 2014, she signed a project to me. And the moment I had the project, I knew I was this close to lose my job. I was not prepared, but now I am, I am in the, uh, you know, I've been transferred into what we call the risk area. So anyway, uh, uh, back in uh, September 22nd, of um, 2014 in that one morning this police officer came to my office she took my badge she um, shut down accesses to all applications or servers and she took my laptop and she kicked me out with nothing all my five years went no. was a waste of time waste of energy and my life was miserable probably you might not feel you might not uh, probably uh, imagine how sad i was at the moment so i was kicked off kicked off and um, i was driving home the early morning crying i was really crying because now i have to deal with how to get to, to keep the family under the roof, how to bring food to kids, have three kids. It was a nightmare. So the moment I came home, I came to this office. I don't have any books at the time. All I have is a place where I can connect. I have some connections, some servers, and I have my laptop. Now I don't have a laptop. My, I used to have the uh, company's laptop, but they took it from me. So I asked myself a very simple question. What happened? Why I lost my job? And the answer was clear, was obvious. I lost my job because I was not confident. I was not an analyst. I did not have skills they needed. That is why I lost my job. I, was I prepared for it? Of course not. I was not prepared for it. I never thought that one day I would face this, uh, this issue. My life with this company was beautiful, smooth, from day one all the way to the end, until this incident happened. Then here we go. I was not prepared. 
So what happened, I promised myself to learn analytics. So I was a victim and probably uh, I was the first victim. Probably I know uh, I was one of the first victims of analytics. And you are going to be a victim, victim again, if you don't um, probably take an action to learn analytics. Anyway, uh, so now I know the problem, the fix is I have to fix it, then I have to learn it. So I promised myself to learn analytics regardless of what's going to cost me. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, I got admitted for my um, third, third master's. At the time when I was in, uh, working for this company, I had two masters in MBA and masters in IT. Now I went for a masters in analytics. I was enrolled at Maryland University. Uh, the moment I get into the program, later two months later, I said, "Thank you, Lord. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, God, that I lost my job three weeks or I'm sorry, three months ago." This is really what I've been missing my life. My 20 years of experience is probably nothing without what I'm about to start. So I was very, very happy. The moment I lost my job, all what I see in front of me is darkness. Is you know, is probably painful music. Now I have to struggle with finance problem. I have to. Uh, start looking for a job. I, there is so many questions that raised in my in my in my head while driving home. It was a nightmare. I did not appreciate it. I did not like it. I was very very mad at myself, not being competent, being um, confident, being upskilled to address this type of of crisis. I was very mad at myself because I was, did not expect it. I was not prepared. Very, very upset. And I start, I started losing faith on myself. I don't, I, I'm no longer believing in myself. I thought this is, this is the end. I'm done. No more IT. But, you know, when one door is closed, trust me, many, many doors now, Allah Ta'ala, the Almighty God has plans for you. So if you see, if something happened to, to you or to us, and you don't understand the logic behind it, trust me, there is a plan behind it. Either you like it or you don't, there is a plan. And I totally submitted myself to the plan. I said, let's do it. Then anyway, I got into the program and I said, this is it. This is why I lost my job. And I lost my job in the right time. If, you know, if it happened five, times, five years later, I don't think I should be here today. So back in September, I, knew, I even don't know how to talk. And Alhamdulillah, now I have, uh, you know, I'm doing my PhD, completed my uh, fourth master's at Columbia University. I am teach, I'm professor at Mercer University teaching data science. I am working on a pro, many, three projects. I am uh, part-time working with um, a company, um, North, 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 I'm going to name it. I'm working on projects with Saudi Arabia, with Morocco, with Senegal. And I have trained more than 6,000 students across the globe. Some of them, most of them, if uh, some of the, if not most of them, they got a job with big company. And one of my students got a job with Amazon and making 220,000 per annum just through the program I'm teaching online. So that is my life. And that is my story, how I got into analytics. And if I were, if I uh, managed to do it with nothing, with no background, I promise you, most of you guys in, in this room would do it better than me. Because at least now you have someone to train you for free. Back in days when I first started my, my journey, I paid 35000 to train myself. Now you are paying, you are donating between 50 and 150 story. So the point I'm trying to make or the, 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 point, yeah, the, the, the point behind this story is to motivate you. Learn 
data science, learn analytics, or prepare to hear the music. Prepare to be a victim either today or tomorrow. It's just a matter of time. And shortly we are going to learn why we need to learn data science. So, um, so we are going to talk about the data explosion. We talk about what is data science, type of analytics, data science portfolio, data science processes. We'll talk about career in data science. We'll talk about the, uh, if we have time, the introduction to machine learning, then deep learning with a less extent. But today uh, we'll talk about the um, introduction to data science. So is data science for me? And um, I promise you guys more friends from my network, they, they called me, they reached out to me asking a very simple question. Is data science for me? I don't have any IT background. I am 52, 53, 57, whatever age you are. I am this and that. I don't I'm no I don't like math. I'm no mathematician. I never programmed in my in my life. I don't have an IT background. Is that a science for me? That is the question that I've been asked and I know some of you guys, I dare you, some of you guys in the room today, they have the same exact questions that have been asked. Is the same mentality? Is that a science for me? Why do we ask these questions? simply because we love the change but we don't want to make the change i don't i don't like to switch from one career to a different we no one likes to change something we love we love it but we cannot we don't want to change we don't want to do it probably we want someone to do it for us so the answer to this question is according to Cathy o'neill um, in her book doing that assignment she said if, if you are the type of a person who loves to solve puzzles and find patterns, with either, either you are, uh, consider yourself a quant or, or not, then data science is for you. That is one criterion that we could use to determine if you are ready to become a data scientist. Do you like to solve problems. If yes, then you, I mean, data science could be your uh, your career. I really don't care about your age. I don't care about your background. I don't care about all these thoughts and negativities. Just flush, flush them out and proceed. If you love to solve problems, then try data science. Data science is one of the best um, probably um, best career worldwide. So what's uh, why data science? And number one, it's a fuel for the 21st century. And that is true. And trust me, guys, if there is going to be a war, a third world, worldwide war, and it's not going to be a nuclear weapon or traditional weapon, it's going to be about data. So a company, I'm sorry, a country that has a power, uh, has a data science power, artificial intelligence power, can control the world. And that is why, you know, they're fighting, you know, there is, there is uh, fights behind the scene about acquiring new technologies, artificial technolo uh, intelligence technologies. Next generation is going to be all about artificial intelligence. So data science is the fuel of the 21st century and it's high demand it's really high demand what makes it so high demand is now companies they are switching to what we call data driven decision management in the past uh, companies they harm uh, experienced um, you know, managers to help the business make a better decisions manage the business make better decisions based on their experience. So you've been working as a manager in XYZ company, you transfer or you move to, um, of course, they are another company that are gonna acquire you, brought you in, and they want you to utilize your experience that you gained 
through the, the company that you used to work for or you used to work with. So it's high demand. Now these companies here, they no longer are making decisions based on your initiatives or guessing or based on your experience. They are making uh, decisions based on what the data is telling them, based on the data. So to make a decision, based, decisions based on the data, we need people, skilled people, with the knowledge and experience about how to get this data, transform it into a product. And we don't have enough trained people yet. Maybe in the future we could, but now we are still, it's still high demand. It's a lucrative um, career. It's always um, developing a lot of fun, less stress, and of course, a good pay. So you could make better, a better world by fixing problems that societies are struggling with, companies, firms, industries are struggling with through data. I, would, I could give you one example. So uh, let's say that you are working with uh, uh, you know, automotive industry or airlines industry, and these machines, they, they generate tons of data per minute. And in that data, there is something that we could utilize to make a better decisions, to determine when uh, an engine would stop when a plane would crash, when something would, would definitely die. If we were to have an information three months or four months before this happens, we could have made a better, you know, probably took a better decision. So that is your, your uh, how, how important you are as data scientist slash data analyst to the society, to the company you are working for, to the entire country, to um, your community, to um, the society, the, the, uh, you know, to the state, city, wherever you are working for, is helping the, the people in the making decision, decision makers with the right information to make decisions before, about something before that something happens. It's a career of tomorrow and we'll talk about this shortly. Of course, um, you know, um, uh, in, the, uh, in the US market only, there's a forecast of a need of 32 million jobs by the year 2023. 32 jobs, I could be, could be wrong, could, I could be right, but there's a huge market and um, a huge market uh, in the, uh, for data science. And lastly, money-wise, at least, at least you should be making between $80 to $100 per hour. At least $80 to $100. I have friends, they are making $350,000 per annum being data scientists. So there are six um, ingredients or six components that should motivate you to become a superhero data scientist to put effort, invest efforts, time-wise and effort-wise. And by the way, data science, as far as I know, is the only, only career that guarantees money back. Money back guarantee means if you spent a thousand to educate yourself, you are gonna give 5,000 in your first check. If you spend 10,000 to educate yourself, you are going to get your 10,000 in the, in the next two months. It's, it's a money back guarantee at this point of time. For the future, I don't know what's going to happen if we have enough data scientists. But right now, there is a shortage of data scientists or there is a shortage of people with skills who can take data and transform it into a product, regardless of the background, regardless of their age. Okay, let me stop here, please. I'm gonna open the floor for you guys to see if you have any question, any concern, any doubt. Uh, Brother Mo, you, you mentioned about salary, right? Is it an entry-level salary or uh, uh, what? Please, you I barely hear you guys. It's, it could be just me. But I could, could please, you know, 
come closer to the mic and speak loud. Is it audible now? No, it's better. Okay. Uh, my question is, uh, you mentioned about salary, uh, about 300K, right? Is it entry-level salary or what is the experience you should have? Uh, there is no, I don't believe, honestly, and this is simply my opinion, I don't believe in entry-level. Why? It's because the data science is, is brand new. It's on, only five, six years old. So if you start now, put effort, and if you invest three months in learning data science, you could be at the same level for someone who's been there for six years. Literally, no, no, my, you could do that. Yeah, my question is, uh, when you go for a uh, job interview, uh, the salary is determined based on your experience, right? So I'm, I want so to know what- The salary is determined based on how many problems that you fixed in the past, and how many uh, problems you are capable of fixing if you were to invest and bring them. And that is why I recommend you guys, uh, when, when you complete this project, this 10-week program, work on the Capstone project and okay. add the Capstone that, project to your resume. That helps. Um, my yes. second question is, you said job shortage is there, right? Still, yeah, I barely hear you again. You know, you are breaking up. Is it audible now? I don't know. No, it's good. OK, uh, my second question is, uh, you mentioned about job shortage right now that uh, you can't fill all the jobs in data science, right? Do you have any uh, stat on that? Like how much is the uh, percentage you still need to be uh, like per year per year based? I don't have any of those, those stats, but I know there is going to be 23 million jobs in the US market based on some studies. Yes. That's why, yes, I, Mohammed. that's why, you know, I mean, now we uh, uh, in the past, we only had uh, PhDs in uh, in the artificial intelligence and uh, and uh, data science. Now they have masters, and they know some of the uh, schools they are providing bachelors in data science. Some schools they are providing the associates in data science. Some schools they are providing certificates. So everybody now is moving towards learning data science, either from the industry level or from the academia level. But the, yes. moment, the moment we have enough graduates with degrees, with skills, I don't think it's going to be high demand anymore. And that is the risk. So if you don't push yourself to learn it, by the time we reach the maturity, then you are going to be, it's going to be too late for you. You already missed the bus. So you have to plan to learn that ascent starting from tonight if you have not already started the journey. From today, you got to learn, you got to start your journey. Okay, so, sir, my question is, uh, uh, after complete this course, uh, do you think we will be able to uh, start work? Uh, if you are, if you are a um, fast learner, uh, I, I think so. I think okay. so. So okay. you're not gonna learn enough. You are gonna learn enough to start solving problems. And that is also, all that matters to companies is they want to hire someone who can solve problems. And also, also, do you recommend after this completion the course we should also to participate in other kind of course or Please, related yes. to this data science? I mean, you got to pre, you got to invest money wise, time wise, effort wise. Data science is a journey, and we are taking one trip. We are driving from okay. New York to Atlanta. Once we get to Atlanta, that's it. That is the end of the 10-week program. You need to drive to California, from California to Canada. It's a journey, no end. OK, so learning, you, will, learning, learning. you will give us advice after completion of this I don't course, have you know. Problem <laughs> doing that. But we can ask for you, you know, then. Yes, sir. Um, Anytime, I'm available in 24-7. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I am available 24-7. That's great. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa This is Mohammed. So uh, I just want to ask, like, do you... Yeah, like, brother, any listen. Kind of book? I'm having problems hearing you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, hold on. Let me, let me make sure it's not me. Just give me a second, please. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. So yeah, my, uh, like, uh, do you recommend any book while uh, you are? Well, I have a lot of books that I will give you. Some of them they are paid books, but I don't have problems, you know, 
giving you these books for free. Brother, a quick question: How much of this program would be hands-on? Uh, because this is this is this would really help if we have a lot of hands-on. Yes, we are going to get to that. Thank you. And and so on starts with uh, week number three. Hey, hey, Mo, uh, this is Mushi again. May I speak for a second? Sure, sir. Uh, I know I have those. I have about fifteen to twenty people signed up. I know I am getting a lot of email from you guys about Canvas login and all this. For guys, those who join later on, I just want to repeat again that this is a program was designed by another organization for months ago. We found out at the end. We are, we just uh, the, you guys got my email today this afternoon. So from this afternoon today, that I know that you, know, you have to understand, months of work was done behind the scene. We will you will get access to Canvas and all the details. Let us finish the class and tomorrow all we'll sort it out and you'll get the details in your mailbox. Okay. Sounds Thank good. you everyone for your patience. Okay, folks, so let's proceed, please. And uh, I'll give you a chance to ask questions later. So please, let's proceed. So uh, in the real life, uh, you know, one of the questions that you you could, um, that someone might ask you at the interview, what should I hire you? And uh, so if I were to hire you today, let's say that I have a position I want to fill. And here is the risk. So please pay attention to this because there is a risk there is a really really serious risk that anyone would face during your career so why should i hire you i i would hire you for two reasons or in other word if i have a position and i share the information with all the people in here in the room and i received all your resumes I, today, as of today, I'm going to look into two things in your resume. The level of experience means if you have 10 years of experience, literally you are better than someone who has five years of experience, better than someone who has you know, two years, better than someone who has uh, who just graduated. So that is the first thing I'm going to look into if I were to hire you. The second things that I would look into is the level, the education level. If you have a PhD, you are better than, literally better than a master's. Of course, master's is better than, uh, than bachelor's. Ba bachelor's is better than, than uh, associate. Associate is better than high school. Unfortunately, uh, tomorrow, which is the future, if I want to hire you, I am gonna still look into the level of experience and the level of edu education but there is one critical component that you need to plan ahead of for it, and that is the analytical mindset. And this is what I lost, what I did not have back in 2014 when I lost my job. I did not have the analytical mindset. And that is the, the third requirement to secure your spot in the future market. You need to have these three things. Experience, it could be in any domain. It does not matter. Education, always a degree is better. It does not require five degrees better. And the, 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 the foremost is the analytical mindset. If you cannot transform a data into a product, you are useless to me, regardless if you have 100 years of experience and 25 PhDs, 35 masters, I really don't care. If you cannot fix a single problem using data, you are useless. I don't need you. I'm not going to spend any dollar and bring you in. Okay. I'm going to skip this. How can data science benefit businesses? I'm going to skip this. But yes, I'm going to talk about this. In the past, businesses, they are making decisions based on intuitions, based on uh, you know guessing, and based on experience. Nowadays, they are making decisions based on data. It's all about data. And this is where the high demand comes into the picture. Because we have data, and we don't have people who can uh, who have skills, uh, skills who can dive deep into this data, uh, zoom into it, investigate it, 
torture it and extract information, extract meaningful insight, extract uh, you know, uh, meaningful information that we can use, we can utilize to make a better decisions. Okay, so companies who switch to data-driven decisions compared to experience and initiatives in, in making decisions, 50% improved customer experience, 50%. And as a matter of fact, I read an article a um, couple of um, probably months ago, any company that does not have the analytical uh, team established they are going to be out of the market. They are going to lose the market or the business for their competitors. Just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. Sorry, guys, I have to mute everybody. So those who are companies that uses data-driven decisions, they are 45% better insight for decision-making. So now you are making a, this, an, an accurate decision, 45% compared to what you've been doing in the past where you only used uh, experience or intuition to make a better decision. 44% is allowing more innovation. So in other words, analytics in general, including artificial intelligence, data science, deep learning, machine learning, NLP, they are bringing values to the business. No, it's impactful values, values that changes the entire culture, the entire story of a business. So now businesses, they are, uh, they are, they are, they need a data scientist. They needed you. And all we need to do is learn, acquire the skills needed to become a data scientist. So I'm going to skip this, a lot of, a lot of questions. So now let's go back, go back one step back, uh, gap back one step. What causes this, you know, what brought this data science into the scene? So it's data. And here are some facts. Every day we create 2.5 quintillion bytes of data. That is 90% of the data in the world today has been created in the last two years. And they know, and they dare you, just before, just 30 minutes before you join the session today, I know you served the net. I know you chat, chatted with someone through WhatsApp. I know you called someone. I know you created some data. So we all, we all created some data. Either we like it or we don't. Prior joining, the session 30 minutes ago. How about the 24 hours? So we generated a lot of data today. And that did the math, you know, worldwide, how much data has been generated. 90% of this data is was generated, was created in the last two years. Some facts, so Walmart you now handles more than 1 million transactions every hour. Not every day, it's every hour. 20, uh, no, well, and this is only, this, this, uh, this, this, this uh, facts, they are three years old. So I believe now probably they are, they are handling 11 millions. Could be easy, 11 millions customer transactions every hour or every day. Probably 11 is too much. It could be 11 millions per hour, per, per day. But still, that is a huge amount of data. Now, a good example. Airbus is generating, the Airbus A380 generates 10 terabytes every 30 minutes of data. So we have data there. Mountains of mountains of mountains of data. The only missing dot is someone like you who has some skills who can dive into this data and give us something. You could find out that you could you could you could predict the time this an engine would stop either in the, uh, in the sky or somewhere else. So these are some facts that they are facts you know about data. 
So this is what we do every uh, every every I'm sorry, every every minute. So every um, actually every every minute, not every day. Six hundred plus videos on YouTube every minute. Seven hundred thousand photos on Flickr, four hundred thousand tweets on the Twitter, um, two million Google search, uh, seven hundred thousand Facebook updates, four hundred thousand minutes of Skype calling every minute. 2 million emails sent every minute. If you did the math, that is the amount of data generated every 24 hours. It's a huge amount of data being generated. But again, the problem is we don't have enough skilled people who can help us extract this information. In the past, we were the consumers. I remember back in days, uh, back in, I'm from Morocco. Now we got one TV, one channel, black and white, and it starts from 8 o'clock, and I'm sorry, from 6 a.m., I'm sorry, 6 p.m., all the way to, um, to 10 p.m. That's it. Talking about in early 80s, uh, you might think that's a joke, but it's a reality, especially from the area where I'm, I came from, Atlas Mountains, not from the big cities. I don't know about the story about big cities, but yes. We were simply waiting to 6 a.m., 6 p.m., and we were standing in front of, uh, sitting in front of the TV and consuming, consuming the information, consuming the data. We did not create any data. And I know it's the same story some part of the world, except, of course, you're in, a, in, a, in, a, in a well-developed countries like U.S. It's totally different. But nowadays, Everybody is consuming the, the, the data and everybody is generating data at the same time. And as I mentioned earlier, before we join, before guys join today's session, just a couple of minutes ago, you generated a lot of data, a lot. So we are the consumers and the generators at the same time, where in the past we were the consumers only. Okay, so um, data, is the oil uh, data is the new oil data is the new oil and the problem is with this data with this oil if you don't know how to refine it it is useless if you don't know how to refine this data you cannot use it and that is what the companies are looking for they have oils they have they mountains of data they have a future oil but they don't have skilled people like you to refine this all and make it uh, extract something meaningful to the business. And that is that is that is why it's high demand, is because we don't have the, the people to refine the, the, this art. What is data science? So the second question that comes to your mind after asking a question is data science for me. So probably you, you would ask what is data science? So uh, if you were, if you were to compare, for example, um, uh, you know, an MBA, an MBA between uh, between a one university from US, from Atlanta, one, and another one from Morocco, and one in South Africa. If you were to compare MBAs, even though in Morocco is French, most likely. Uh, in um, uh, Atlanta, Georgia is English, and it could be something else in uh, in uh, South Africa. You are going to find out that these programs, even though they are taught in three different uh, countries, probably different languages, they are probably 99.99%, they are similar. MBAs, they are similar. Why? Is because these programs have been there for many years. They already reached the maturity. In data science, if you were to compare two programs within the two universities within the same city, you are going to see they have different opinion. So everybody has a different opinion on what is data science, what is machine learning, what is deep learning, what is artificial intelligence. They have different opinion. Why is that? Because data science and this new technology, they are new. They have been, they've been there for many years, for 50 plus years, but the light has been shed to them after 2013. But basically they are new. 
and they have not they have not uh, reached the maturity yet. But one definition I really like is uh, data science is the ability to take any data, take any data, understand this data. Is it structure? Is it unstructured? Is it semi or quasi or quasi structure? Um, is it scattered? Is it, you know, understand the shape of it, the range of it, the uh, understand the, the, the quality, its quality, and understand um, its characteristic, understand the size, understand the shape, understand uh, many, many things about it. Then you need to process it, means you need to uh, bring it to a certain assumption, to a certain shape. And you need to extract values from it. You need to extract meaning for not all the data is useful, but some data are useful. So we need to find the data that is useful within a data, within a raw data. And you need to visualize it, transform it into graphs, an image, word, a thousand word. And that is true with data science. When you create a graph, you could explain it better than having documents, having paragraphs and paragraphs describing a phenomenon and you need to communicate you need to communicate your finding with stakeholders and decision management uh, decision making management you could be one of the best data analysts that are scientists on the face of the planet but if you don't know, know how to communicate something with someone you are useless to us that is going to be a huge important skills in the next decade. I'm going to highlight this in red. Huge important skills the next decade. And this is not my word. This is not a Hall variant Google chief economist. And that is data science. The ability to take a data to be able to understand this data, process it, extract value from it, visualize it, and communicate the finding, that is going to be a huge, it's going to be a huge important skills for the next decade. So in week number two, we are going to learn how to understand the data. Uh, week number three, actually week number four. Week number five, we are going to process and extract and week number five, we are going to visualize, and the mind is going to be building uh, models and communication. So we, the program that uh, the free program is designed in line with this beautiful code from an experienced domain knowledge uh, person. Okay, data science. This is another beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, you know, quote. That is, if you don't reveal some, you know, something, uh, some insight soon, I'm going to be forced to slice and dice and drill. In other words, according to Roland, uh, Ro um, Ronald Coase, data science is torturing the data until this data confesses to something. You know, if you, um, uh, especially from the from the country I'm coming from, and I am not. Disrespect in my country. I simply I am familiar with it. So if you torture someone, they are gonna confess to something they did and something they did not do. They did not do. If you torture me enough, I'm gonna tell you just stop. I killed him. I'm the person who killed him. I did. I was not involved in anything like that. But under the torturing, I have to confess to whatever you want. Either I did it or I don't. I did not do it, and that is data science. Take the data and start burying it, start torturing it, and this data is going to tell you everything you want about anything you want, if you have the right data and the right understanding of what you want. Okay, data science is a multidisciplinary field. You know, it's not one subject and you are done. So you have to know some statistics, yeah, data visualization, now database, data processing, 
machine learning, communication, patterns recognition, data mining and presentation, communication, domain knowledge, business strategy, business analysis, solving problems, increasing in, in, uh, data rec in, uh, requisition, etc. So the beauty about this is even though it's a multidisciplinary field, you don't really need to be an expert to become a data scientist. You don't, be, you don't have to be an, an expert programmer to become a superhero data scientist. You don't have to be an expert statistician, an expert mathematician, an expert analyst to become a data scientist. The more you know, yes, the more you know, the better you'll be off, but you don't, it's not required to be an expert to start the journey in data science. So I'm gonna skip this, a lot of information. So your job, if I were to hire you, your job is to help me make a better decisions. If I were to hire you, this is your job to make me, uh, make me, uh, help me make a better decisions. How to do that? Yeah, you analyze the data, so you get, you, you'll be given data, analyze it. When you analyze it, you are gonna extract information and I'm going to use this information to make a better decision. I am no longer going to make a decision based on your experience. Uh, if you are an experienced uh, manager, I really don't care about your experience anymore. I do care. I do care, but I am not going to be based in my decisions based on experience. And by the way, data science is not a substitution of someone's experience or initiatives. Data size is supplement, it's an add-on. So if you have an experienced data you know, manager, adding analytics to, to the top of your experience would make a perfect decisions, would help the management make a better decisions. But yet it's all about data. It's all about torturing the data until it gives me something that I want to make a better decisions for me, for my family, from the society, from the country, from the, the company I'm working for, for the business, for whatever you are trying to do. So no longer I'm gonna use uh, uh, experience, but I need to use data science, uh, data. So what data science, what, 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 you know, what is data science? Actually, that is, that is a, a typo in there. So let me stop here and let me open the floor to see if you guys have any questions or concerns. So I'm going to unmute you. So please mute yourself. Riaz, please mute yourself. So everybody, please mute yourself unless you have a question or concern. Please. OK, questions, concerns? Welcome. Um, I don't have any experience in data science. So my question is like, um, when you're talking about data, um, what kind of data are we talking about? Or it could be from anywhere. So when we are talking about data, data is a big word, by the way. It could be a PDF. It could be a video. It could be an audio. It could be images. It could be a flat file. It could be an Excel file. It could be anything as far as the data that it could be in anything. And there are four types of data. There is structured data where you see rows and columns. Rows and columns. So you got that is structured data. You got, you got rows and columns. And this is very easy to manage, easy um, to uh, investigate and easy to analyze. And there is another called um, semi-structured data. The third one is called quantity structured data, and the fourth one is called unstructured data. Is a text. There is no format. Ninety percent of the data circulated worldwide is unstructured data. So, regardless of the type of the data that you have, it is your responsibility to transform it to this type, to this format, to structured data. So, we uh, there is a lot of methods to do that. They are very easy to do. Unfortunately, they are out of the scope of this program. So this program, we are going to learn how to deal with structured data, with the tabular data, 
where data where you have rows and columns. Okay. Quick question. Uh, what's please hold on, yeah. Please hold on, brother. Please hold on. Just I want okay. to make sure that Sister Rask's question is clear. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. So next, please. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, what's the quasi data? Say again. Uh, you talked about quasi data, right? What's what's that? Uh, uh, the format quasi, of the data. Quasi, you know, semi quasi or quasi, depends on yeah. how you pronounce it. So structured, semi structured, quasi structured, and unstructured. Okay, so so how how that data looks like? Is it um, the it one you talked like about? It's structure. in between them. It's in between. It's like a, a HTML or XML. XML is not um, structured. Is not unstructured. It's somewhere in the middle. Like 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 click streams, is not structured. Is not unstructured, but somewhere in the middle. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Sir, my question is. No, hold uh... yeah, please hold on. So, if you were to look, for example, I'm going to open up uh, my website, bbds.ma. bds.ma. This is my website. And um, as you can see, it's all unstructured data. All unstructured data. Why we have a lot of text. We have a lot of images and got a lot of information in there. And if you um, view page source, this is quantity structure. Okay, so it's not fully, um, uh, you know, um, structured, but you can you have you have some some inheritance of structure. We got some tabs in there. We got some tags, and you can navigate through. Uh, if you were to get into this this part, you can definitely by finding the tags one at a time by finding the hierarchy of the tags. But the quantity and semi and quantity and structured data, you are going to put effort. You are going to put effort to uh, transform it into structured data. Yes, Thank sir, you. Mike. My question is this, uh, if you are saying, you know, the make a right decision, like a right data. So if we have to follow some kind of rule of book or some kind of, you know, like a real data, you know, the how we can an analyze when we are doing, you know, the making, you know, the data, you know, the transferring or some when we making it. You know, if there is a, some kind of rule of book we have to follow, or yeah, there is a lot of methods. There is a lot of strategies, methodologies that you can use to uh, to analyze your data and transform it into um, into something useful. And that is something we are going to talk about in the second session. It's uh -huh. called Chris. Oh. It's called. Oh. Okay, and uh, uh, who is some um, decision maker? Like, you know, who analyze uh, your boss, the upper boss? You know, you are the, the analyst, and the guy who hired you is your decision maker. Oh, okay. And by the way, you could be the decision maker also. Okay, you are working for Big Bang Data Science Solution, for example. Uh -huh. Okay, and um, we see there is a lot of opportunities in China, for example. Okay, can we can we hire Chinese, train them, and help us to do the business in China, or can we simply translate our website into Chinese, translate this website into Chinese, and that's it? So that is the decision that I want to make, and I I don't want to make it based because you are a, a good. Uh, experienced manager who speaks Chinese, who's been in China for many years, he knows what to do. I don't want to make that decision. I, w I don't want to make a decision based on that. I want to make a decision based on some data that we need to collect. I still need you. I still need your experience. I still need your domain knowledge, but I'm going to I'm gonna rely heavily on the data. Okay. Got it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we got it. Brother Mo, 
Yes, sir. How the data science will gonna help in the medical industry? How the data will be stored? So I'll give you some examples. Medical. Uh, so, do you know? Uh, can can you can you guess? Can you guess how much money? How much businesses are losing when you miss when you miss uh, an appointment? Imagine you ha you have a clinic and you have 100 appointments today tomorrow and only and you, you you prepared for it you have all the personnel all the doctors in in place to 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 address or to support or to serve your hand appointment and next day only five of them showed up you know how much money how much you are, how much money you, you think you are going to lose in that one day yeah a lot it's i mean that's 400 million dollars Lost a year and missing appointments. Can you tell me if your patient, Mommy Dwani, is your patient and he has an appointment tomorrow? Can you tell me if Mommy Dwani is coming tomorrow to the appointment or is going to miss it? If we know that Mommy Dwani is coming tomorrow, then we are going to plan for it. If we know that Mommy Dwani is going to miss it, then we are going to charge him $20, number one. And number two, we are not going to have a full stop for that day that is how this is one way that you could bring a lot of value to healthcare by simply reducing the the lost money because of missing appointment i'm giving you only one example okay so this, I next can, can, uh, yeah please hold on please hold on. i can back up that example. yeah okay yeah I, i'll let you sp speak brother if you have an experience in the field the brother do you see the picture yep good so the next question is like about the data like how the data will be analyzed like usually medical record data is like very big for uh, any research wise so most likely most likely is uh, the, the company will provide the data the data of the is called historical data the the last 10 years of data and in data we have patients we have their appointment we have how many patients missed an appointment, how many patients called to reschedule, how many schedules that we had, how many schedules that did not show up. We have all this type of information. And about patients, we have their age, their symptoms, their disease they are struggling with, uh, their historic medical history, their payment plan. We have everything about you. And uh, we have everything about all our patients that we have in the database. So we are going to extract that data, analyze it, and come with a decision about appointment, about uh, uh, you know medical treatment, about um, you know um, recruiting uh, enough staff, enough doctors, enough um, you know nurses, about uh, starting new uh, new facilities 50 miles from now from from where we are. So once you have a data, you are going to have a, you know we are going to have an opportunity to make a better decision, to grow, upsell, cross-sell, make a better decisions for the business. If and only if you have a data. And the data is already there. I don't think there is a hospital, I don't think there is a clinic who does not collect data from their patients. I don't think that is possible. 70 years ago, yes, but now it's all digitized. All clinics, they have computers. And with the COVID, you simply uh, they send you the link through you know through your email, and they ask you probably 70, 60, 100 questions. That's all forms you need to fill out, and that is the data they are going to keep in to you to use for, for for tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. I know someone has an expertise in the in the healthcare, so if you want to talk, so please go ahead and please proceed. Not, not an. Ex I don't have an experience in the healthcare, but usually I get like three to four uh, text messages uh, regarding any appointments if right. my kids have or I have. I so do. That's what they are trying to do nowadays. That like is. They give you a heads up like uh, three days back, two days back, one day back. I usually get that heads up messages from my doctors. And even though, even though with that brother, they are still losing money because of missing appointment. I missed so many appointments this year. Some, you know, for reason, you know, something probably my uh, 
does not show up in my calendar or maybe I forgot, maybe I was too busy. But the moment you miss a session, uh, an appointment, you are actually causing a loss to, the, to those clinics and hospitals. Can we stop it? Yes, we can. Can we stop it without losing a client? Yes, we can. What do we need? We are going to need two things. We are going to need the data and someone like you who can grab or extract information from that data. That is what's needed. Okay, one last question before we proceed, please. So the, in terms of the data, does it have to be aggregated into one place or can it come yes, from sir. multiple different no. Data is, could be everywhere. It could be scattered. It could be uh, on, uh, in the cloud. It could be um, in, uh, in flat, flat files in the local systems. It could be anywhere. By your responsibility as data scientist or data analyst is to have the data that you now you are going to use in one place. Yeah, you have to use it in one place. So we, we would have to be sourcing that into one place. Someone would have to help you from the business, not you. Okay. Okay, folks, let's proceed. Yes, please. Okay, so uh, why? Why data science? So the second question is, uh, it should be why. Not what? Why data science? So we talked about the explosion of data. We talked about what is data science and now why data science. So I'm going to share with you guys some facts. And data science is the sexiest career of the 21st century. Just Google it. Let's Google it together. The sexiest career of, I know there's a spill, of the 21st century. Data science. Why? And actually it is. You know, before I lost my job, always scared of losing the job, a lot of stress, no, you know, no more headache. The moment I switch to data science, I have a beautiful life. And as a matter of fact, I'm working with a company, you know, part-time, you know, working on my own. I deliver a lot of beautiful insight to the company, but less stress. I don't have that headache, uh, you know, I don't know what to do, who to talk to, what if this happens, if I lose my job. I really don't care if, they fire, if I get fired today. Tomorrow I'll get another job. At this point of time, in the future, this could change. And I'm not talking about this company I'm working, I'm working for, I'm talking in general. So as data scientists, yes, data science is the sexiest career of the 21st century. Data scientist, and that is true, I experienced myself. Uh, the, um, according to Glassdoor, Glassdoor ranked data scientists as the first job to pursue 2016 all the way to 22, uh, 2020, 21, 22. And uh, I shared with you, I'm gonna, uh, actually I'm gonna share with you a report. That is a report uh, from, uh, yeah, this is um, from LinkedIn. Uh, actually it's a um, one year old, 22 and uh, emerging job reports. Just Google it, emerging report, jobs report. And uh, probably they might have now, by now, they, they should have a 2021 uh, report. Guess what? The top 15 emerging jobs in US, artificial intelligence specialists, 74% annual, annual growth. It's growing exponentially, really going fast. If you have the artificial intelligence skills, you are good to go. You are done. Followed by, by what? Robotic engineering. It does use artificial intelligence. Followed by what? By data scientists. And data science, robotic, and artificial intelligence, it's all called data science. So data science is the first. 
data science is the second, and data science is the third. And after that comes full stack engineer, and site reliability engineer, and customer success specialist, sales development representative, data engineer, behavior health technician, etc. Um, back end developer, you know, chief re revenue officer, uh, cloud engineer, JavaScript developer, and product owner. So the first, the second, and the third is data science. That is why data science is because it's high demand. Data science is this, uh, the sexiest job of the 21st century. Okay. Harvard uh, Business says that is, yeah, data scientist is the sexiest career of the 21st century. LinkedIn um, comes, you know, comes with the yearly report, says data science is the hottest skills that got recruiter attention since 2014, all the way probably to uh, 2030. And it's going to be the same for the next five to 10 years. After that, we don't know what's going to happen. So the future belongs to companies and people that turn data into product. This is a key success keyword here. If you can turn any data into a product, you are the person that companies will fight for. Companies and people who turn data into a product means torture the data, investigate your data, look into your data, zoom into your data, extract meaningful information that is turning a data into a product. Okay, so in terms of type of analytics within the realm of data science, there are four types of analytics. Uh, the first type is uh, descriptive analytics. Descriptive analytics is very simple, less complicated, and less value. And descriptive analytics simply tries to answer questions in the format what happened, explain what has happened, when it happened, who was involved. Let's, let's, for example, I'm gonna take a name from the group, Assad is my client. Then today I lost Assad, he's no longer my client. So I'm gonna hire some one of you to uh, apply some descriptive analytics and what this person is gonna do, find out what happened with Assad how it happened with Assad, uh, learn about the problem, learn about uh, where this come, you know, starts, you know, learn about all, anything that happens with Assad in the past. So that is descriptive analytics. It's less value, it's already too late, but we could use what we learned on Assad to apply it on Abdul Majid, if he's my client and we don't know if it's gonna, it's gonna stay active or churn. So descriptive analytics is simply trying to understand what has happened in the past. Less value and less complication. So one level of descriptive analytics, it's more complicated, more complex, but more value. It's called diagnostic analytics. And diagnostic, diagnostic analytics is trying to answer the question why. Why we lost Asad, brother Asad, why we lost this client, his valuable client, he's been with us for the last 10 years, we did a lot of business together. Why we lost him? So now it's more complicated to find why, but it's more valuable. Once we understood why, uh, as a turn, then definitely we can apply what we learned uh, on this case on other cases before they happen. Another type of analytics, it's more valuable, more powerful than diagnostic analytics and descriptive analytics, but it's more complicated. It requires a lot of skills, and that is predictive analytics. Predictive analytics is simply trying to understand, trying to find out if Assad 
is, is, is leaving tomorrow or is trying to answer the question is uh, in the format of, uh, of what is the probability that our client, Asad Zaki, is leaving us tomorrow or two days from now or five months from now? Can we know that? Can, can, we, can, can we know about it? Yes, we can. And if we have this piece of information, I promise you, we are not going to let um, uh, client, our client Asad Zaki leave. And it happened to me, and it could happen to you also. So if you are, if you have subscribed to a service, if you got a call from someone, let's say that you are, you have subscribed to um, uh, TNT or Verizon or T-Mobile or any uh, you know service provider companies, and if they know that you are leaving, you are gonna get a call from them. And it happened to me and my family. We had a family plan with. Uh, uh, service provider, I'm not going to name it. And we complained a lot. I, I know they have an algorithm behind the scene that uh, flashes out uh, or um, flags out people who are most likely to leave. And guess what? My, my brother was the head of the account. They called him. They thanked him for being a valuable client. And they said they offered him a very small, uh, no, beautiful uh, you know, smartwatch for free. It's not for free. And they did not tell him, we know that you are leaving. But you are going to get a call because they have that piece of information ahead of time. And as a matter of fact, uh, keeping a client, you know, bringing, bringing new clients to the business is more expensive than keeping your existing clients. It's always good to keep your existing clients rather than bring in new clients it's because it's going to cost you a lot, money-wise, effort-wise, time-wise, etc. So companies, they do whatever is going to take them to keep their clients rather than fetch or find out other clients. So they know we were this close. They were, we were this close to lose us. They were this close to lose us. So they have this piece of information. It's called predictive. They predicted that Midwani family, they are leaving a few days from now. Then now they, they have this, this piece of information. They called my brother and they thanked him for being a valuable client and they offered him a watch. And they know if my brother told them, hey guys, I'm leaving. Now I got a watch, I'm leaving. They are going to offer him something else. Maybe a discount, maybe one month free, maybe something else. They will never tell my brother and myself because we, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, in the, in the, in the uh, an account in the account too. They will never gonna tell us that we have an algorithms that determine you are living, and they are not gonna tell you that. But they know we are living, and that is called predictive analytics. And this is what we are. We need. We need to learn is make some predictions. The last and most valuable but complicated. A type of analytics is called prescriptive analytics. Is the term is recommending what would be the best way to make Zaki uh, asset Zaki our client asset Zaki satisfied, active, and also recruit him to bring more clients to us. That is more complicated but more valuable. So these are the four type of analytics that you might end up doing. And some of them, they are valuable. Some of them, they are complicated. Some of them, they don't require any skills. Some of them, they are, require heavy understanding, heavy skills, heavy domain knowledge. So descriptive analytics, simply addressing something that happened in the past. Diagnostic analytics, addressing why it happened. And predictive analytics, addressing what is the likelihood is going to happen. And prescriptive analytics, addressing what should we do to stop it from hap not hap from happening. So let me stop here for a moment. I'll give you guys a chance to ask questions. Any questions, any concerns, please? So, so typically, when, sorry. Um, so typically, typically when, kind of like the probability question. Yeah, say again. Predictive analysis, it is a probability question. 
it is it, it's a probability question but it's not always probability it does use it does use machine learning to learn those probabilities questions concerns please yeah so so when you when you typically work on the analytics uh, do you uh, as a data scientist or a data analyst um, do you work with a domain consultant in order to understand uh, and then build the algorithm to accordingly or you need to have it's mandatory for the data scientist or analyst to have the domain uh, expertise as well okay Riaz, uh, please hold on to your question uh, i have an answer to it shortly okay thank you sir okay. other questions please yeah one comment and this is asad zaki so my comment is just call me man i'll tell you say again sorry oh <laughs> this is the guy you're afraid of losing i know i know i know i'm simply i know i know you i'm just joking i, I know I'm that's why just, just call me i'll tell you everything <laughs> <laughs> that's true i know i simply use you as an example so we can explain the difference between this type of energy no issue we lost we lost zaki we lost asad we need to know um, what happened and the second level, why asset has left? The third one, is there a chance that asset is going to leave? What is the chance that asset is going to leave? Then the fourth one, what can we do to stop asset from leaving? And this is all the type of analytics that the the, uh, the U.S. markets needed to uh, remain competitive. And this is where it's coming to fit. Yes. I, I believe Brother Asad needs a smart watch too. That's true. <laughs> okay, folks. So if you don't have questions, let's proceed. I have a question, actually. Yes, sir. Uh, what exactly is the difference between a data analyst and a data scientist? So data analyst is a soldier, and data scientist is major or captain. <laughs> That's the difference between them. They are both in the army. So data science is the senior level, is the senior level data analyst. Data analyst is all about doing descriptive, uh, I mean, data, data analyst is doing descriptive analytics. Data scientist is doing predictive, they're prescriptive. Okay, got it, thank you. You are welcome. Okay, folks, let's proceed, please. Okay, I'm going to skip this because we talked about, about them. Skip, skip, skip. And this is the beauty about data science. Data science is transparent. Once you complete, once you understand the process, you could work for any uh, company regardless of industry. You could work for media entertainment, from utilities company, telecommunication companies, transportation, security, retail, finance, healthcare, it doesn't really matter whom you are working with as far as you have a data. If there is a data, there is data science. And it's, it's, it's transparent. Once you understand how to conduct an analytical project end to end, it really does not matter you know, whom you are working with or whom you are working for. That is the beauty about uh, data science. Okay, I'm going to skip a lot of these, a uh, lot of these data prepared data science portfolio. How do we build data science portfolio? There are five components. There are five components that you need to work on if you were to become a superhero data scientist. So number one, you need to have some quantitative skills, some math, some statistics to help you make sense of your data. You don't have to be a statistician. You don't have to be mathematician, but at least you need to know what is the mean of your data, what is the average, what is the mode, what is the standard deviation, what is the variance, covariance. You need to make sure that your data sounds statistically before you apply an analytics. Of course, you need to have some technical background. 
you need to know at least how to use a computer, how to serve the net, how to navigate through some programming like R and Python, you know, how to apply some, if you were to use predictive analytics, how to apply some machine learning, how deep learning, how NLP, et cetera. And this is something that you can learn. If I manage to learn without a background, I think anyone in the room would manage to do it. F, and only if you have four qualities. You have four qualities. If you really want to be on the top of these five core competencies, there are four characteristics that is required to become a superhero that are scientists. Number one, patience, passions, commitment, and education. That's it. You know, your age, your background, just flash it, you know, put it behind you and move on. And you need to be skeptical. So always you need to ask questions. Ask as many questions as possible. Let's go back to the, the example of, um, you know, our relationship with uh, Brother Asad Zaki. He's our client. So we could ask questions, you know, what is it? What would cause uh, Asad to leave? Why he left? Can we call him and uh, find out what happened? Can we talk? So always asking questions. So you need to build a bank of questions, interesting questions related to the incident that we had with Asad. And based on those questions, you are gonna start designing the solutions. Of course, we have many assets in the in our clients. If we were, if we if we lose one asset, asset means lion, by the way, is an Arabic word. If we lose one asset, we are gonna lose all other assets. If we lose one client, and we are gonna lose all clients with the similar characteristic, and we don't want that to happen. So we are gonna concentrate on this one incident, you know, analyze it, learn from it, and predict the likelihood to happen again in the future. And if that is the case, we are gonna proactively take actions before it happens. And curious and creative. So you always need to think about different solutions. For a single problem, you could have a thousand of ways to solve it but you need to find the best way, the best way. And finally, you need to communicate, you are be working as a, as a team. And um, I believe uh, uh, Zakaria who asked a question and asked you to hold on it. Uh, what is the name of the brother? Yes, Riaz. Yes, yes. And I know you asked the question and mm -hmm. I'm gonna about to address it. But part of it, you, all go, you work in a team and you need to communicate with your team, communicate with the, with the boss, with the direct management, and also you need to communicate with the people of interest, with people who have a strong interest in the solving the problem. So if you don't have all these qualities, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal because you will be working in a team. So data science is a team sport, and this is the answer to your question, brother. So you could be working with business user, project sponsors, project manager, business intelligence, data engineers, data administrators, DBA, and you. So you are part of the game. You are not all the game, but you are an important part of the game. So in theory, you will be working with a team it does not matter how many, the, the number number of members of that team, but what matters is the quality of that team. You are gonna work with a team with three expertise. Number one, two, and three. You are gonna work with someone who has some domain expertise, someone who knows the business better than you. It's called business expertise or domain expertise. And that is a requirement to for a success for a successful analytical team. Then number two, you will be working with someone who data has some data expertise, someone who knows the data better than you. You just get hard got hard yesterday. There is no way you are gonna know they you know the business in one night or in a week or in a month. And they hired you. I don't want you to spend one month 
trying to understand about the business straight to the point so and also there is no way you know about all data so we need someone to be in our team who knows the data better they know where the data has been located is been how data has been stored where the data has been stored they know the shape of the data they know the the size of your data the type of the data the structure of the data they know the smallest uh, uh, unit of your data they have the answers that you could you, you might have uh, to the question that you might have about data and of course third is you data science so there are three expertise you need to have in your data science team you need to have a domain expert someone who knows the domain better knows the, the business better data expert someone who knows the data better and you data scientist someone who can transform the data into a product to fix the problem that you've been hired for you've been paid 200,000 120 or even 100,000 per annum and that is the answer to your question brother clear thank you you are welcome okay so this is a typical team from there so um, they have two type of uh, data scientists they have technical data scientists someone who builds uh, the solutions from scratch so PhD in a they are doing a lot of research PhD great programmers they know data science end to end they know statistics they know math they know programming they know a lot and citizen data scientist someone who comes after them comes after them and maintain monitor their work so and this is another beauty about this learning data science if you cannot manage to become a superhero technical data scientist there is always a chance to become a citizen data scientist citizen data scientist is someone who monitors the automation so i am a technical data scientist i am going to design a solution i'm going to put it in the production you know automate it into production i don't have time to check it every single morning or every single hour i need someone uh, with uh, you know some skills data science skills but less technical someone simply who can monitor the progress of this solution that we just put into production and that is called a citizen data scientist no they are they are called data science data scientists but they have different specialties and probably money wise you are going to see some difference so we are going to have a data scientist number one number two we need a business analyst business analyst is simply the main expertise someone who knows the business better than us number three we need someone who knows the data and number four we are going to need a developer and developer is only needed if we know that the solution that we are about to design for this this company that hired us requires deployment into production i don't have and i'm talking about myself i don't have the skills to deploy a model into production. I can design a solution for you, but it is your responsibility to, to deploy it. So we need to have someone within our team who can help us to deploy the, the solution to production. Otherwise, it is gonna be so hard once you complete, once we design a solution as a team, it's gonna be so hard to explain what we need to a developer and expecting from her or him to deploy it in the right time, the right uh, with the right budget and with the right window. So we have to have a developer from the beginning. So at least as a watcher, as, as an observer, so simply um, is going to be there for uh, with us from the beginning of, of the project to learn and understand how we are conducting the the the, the, pro, uh, the, the, uh, the project. So once we get into the point we need to deploy the solution to production he already she or he already are familiar familiar with the process they are going to deploy it very easily without spending time trying to explain or trying to transform the knowledge to him or her and expecting them to deploy it within the time frame so citizen data scientists and this is an old uh, statistics 
you know, Gartner predicted that through 2017, the number of citizen data scientists will grow five times faster than the number of data scientists. Why is that? It's because 40% of data science tasks will be automated. All be placed automatically into production, and I don't have time to monitor it. We need someone who can monitor it for us, maintain it, fix it if needed, update it if needed. So we learn data science, and if you cannot make it to the top hero, then at least you are going to still be a data scientist with less, um, you know, less, uh, less uh, scope or less skill scope or less um, technical skills. Okay, so jobs will be lost. 5% of all jobs can be completely automated. So unfortunately, either today and uh, sooner or later, you are going to be a victim of data science. You are going to lose your job. Data science, artificial intelligence, they are, they are taking the jobs from us. They are taking the jobs. From, they took my job back in 2014. Luckily, that was the right time. And I am very thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that happened back in 2014. If it happened today, then it's going to be, it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be too late. I'm going to give up. I'm totally going to switch the career. I'm going to go work on a gas station or somewhere else. I have to work anyway. I'm not saying that gas station is too low, but I'm going to switch the career to something that I, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't like. So 5% of all jobs can be completely automated means 5% of jobs can be taken from us. 60% jobs can be automated. Are all of the 60%? 25 to 30%, they are CAO and management. So in other words, if you are in the management, if you have an, if you are in the management and losing your job, there is a high, higher risk or higher chance to lose your job. In other words, if you are in the management, you really, really, really need to start your journey and add in analytics to your plate. You have to. Otherwise, you are going to face what I faced six years or seven years ago or eight years ago. So even though we are losing jobs, even though we are losing jobs, now data science has created a lot of jobs for us. Trainer. Trainer is someone who can train a model, who can train a solution using the data. So, the, so at this point of time, this data science solution, they don't train themselves. We train them. So we need a trainer, someone who teaches uh, artificial systems, uh, artificial intelligence systems, uh, how to, how they should perform, how they should do it, take a task. We need explainer, someone who can explain what is going on with these models, how these models are making their decisions, based on what, how these models are learning, what these models needed to learn how they learn, what is the value of their decision, what is the value of their, their learning. So we are going to need an expert, statistician, mathematician, programmer, data scientist, data analyst, who can explain to stakeholders and uh, business management or to layperson what is, what is this going on. And finally, sustainer, when we have a solution, the solution cannot last forever. It always need maintenance. It needs a care. It needs someone to look into, someone to monitor. So we're always going to need someone out there to keep an eye on the performance of the models. And here is the deal. Learn data science, number one, to avoid being a victim of losing your job. Number two, to increase the chance to get a job. So learn data science to avoid being a victim of losing your job. And I promise you, you will if you don't prepare ahead of time. And also learn data science to increase a chance to get a better job. And that is my two cents for tonight. Okay, so uh, 
data science process i'm going to simply talk about this and then now we are running out of the time it's uh, almost um, two hours talking so let's uh, let's end with this so uh, data science process what does it look like the life of the data scientists they the day-to-day -day activities of data scientists so what does data scientist do? Uh, what, uh, what does a day in the data science life look like? This is some of the questions that you probably you might ask. And this is a typical, a typical uh, workflow of data scientists. You start with a problem. So when you get hired the first day, your manager will call, call you in to his or her office. And of course, they will introduce you to the entire organization. This is um, our Zaki data scientist. And then after that, you are gonna, you'll be given a problem. And you start, you know, um, the first thing you gotta do is you need to spend time understanding the problem. Then after a complete understanding of the problem with the help of the domain experts, with the, the business expert, then we are gonna acquire the data. And with the help of the data expert, we know what the data we are going to need. We know where the data is located. We know the shape, the type, the structure of the data that we have. We know the location. We know the size. We know the quality. We know the, 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 the features. We know the characteristic. We know everything. We are, we are going to know everything we know about the data if and only if we have a data expert within our team. Then so once we have the data, of course, this data comes in a raw shape. Simply means it could be the right data, it could be the wrong data, it could be too much data, it could be too little data, less data, it could be anything, it could be just a garbage, it could be a dirty data. So we need to spend time uh, understanding this data, understanding the, the quality of data by applying three things, data exploratory data analysis, which we are going to learn in the program, statistical analysis, which we are going to learn in the program, and what we call data visualization, which we are going to learn in the program as well. So we are going to use three methods to explore, get to know the data better. So once we know the data, we know the quality of the data, then we are going to try to fix what needs to be fixed. Fixing the data is called data preparation or data preprocessing. We need to bring our data into an acceptable shape with certain assumptions. Otherwise, the model, they wouldn't appreciate that. So we need to feed into our model the best, the high quality data. Otherwise, it's a garbage in, a garbage out. And um, I'll give you an example, a good example, and you must search it. I, I've read somewhere that some airports, they have those uh, faucet in the, in the bathrooms. Uh, where uh, where you scan your hand and they simply through 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 water and these uh, smart or intelligent uh, machines uh, the uh, they designed using machine learning for a reason or another if your skin is dark you won't get water so they are biased towards um, you know dark skin or black uh, black people or African people I, I'm an African I consider myself uh, uh, one of them. So I don't think I'm going to get water. So it's biased. It's, 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 uh, it's, uh, of course, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be happy, but the machine is biased. Why? It's because the data that we feed in those, those machines to, to learn, to train, that were biased. Probably we will use only a, a, a specific minority, uh, you know, specific uh, ethnicity or race to build, um, to build those machines those uh, machine solutions. So we need to prepare, pre-process the data. Otherwise, it is going to be uh, garbage in, danger out, or garbage in, garbage out. And after we prepare the data, of course, we are going to build models. Models, they are simply representative. If I were to train you in this program, so I got here 58 uh, participants in this program. If I want to train you for 10 weeks, and I want to send you all, I want to send you to Europe to present me and each one of you in a, in a different uh, conference. How much 
you can represent of me and that is a model so you are a model a model is simply a you know, digital representative of a reality i am the reality so someone please stop sharing your screen otherwise i'm going to kick you out of the room thank you sir if that is a, that is a, that is an impolite to jump onto mic or i said zaki please stop sharing your screen I said, Zaki, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick you out. I said, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. I'm sorry. I did not know what I was doing. I was, it said yeah. main screen. I just clicked on it. Please My don't. Apology. Go. Thank you, sir. Not a problem. Okay, now you are gonna be about to lose you for good. <laughs> so the the example, my prediction will turns to be to be to be correct. I was talking about you as an example that uh, you'll be uh, you will be the you'll be churned and now we are about to 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 to, uh, to fire you. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. So we got a model which is simply a representative of the reality. So we have to train you over and over and over until we make sure that you can present represent me very good or in a very good no a better way then we can send you somewhere to Europe, to South, South America, North Africa, Africa, Asia, to represent me. And so we are going to build models. And to build models, we are going to train them under the data. So we are going to train you on the program for many, many months, train you on different corners of the program, so preparing you to, for a presentation. So once we have a model, so of course, we have 50, we have 60 students now taking this program uh, live. We are going to train you all. And of course, we are not going to send all of you. We are going to take the best five of you. And out of that best five, we are going to keep only one, one model, best model. And of course, we are going to communicate that with the business. And we are going to put that, we are going to put that one model into production. And the, the, the production is going to give the insight information for the business to make a better decision. And the loop starts again. So this is the life of data scientist. This is the, this is the data scientist day-to-day um, -day activities. This is why you will be doing as data scientists all the time. And let me stop here, and I'm going to open the floor for you guys to ask questions. Brother, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Um, so in, in your experience, what's the life expectancy of a model? Because obviously the variables are constantly changing. And yes, as you build a model, you're going you're gonna to have to advance it as well based on the new requirements that are being introduced. So like in, in your experience, having worked with models, what is your life expectancy in your opinion is, of, uh, of a model? It totally depends on um, how the change of the data. If your data change overnight, that is the life of your of your model. It's overnight. If your data changes every every three months, that is the life of your model. And by the way, data has a life has has a time to, to to live. It is a data that lives for one second, and it is a data that lives for twenty years. I'll give you an example for data that lives for one second. Imagine you are in the operation room at the hospital. And so you have a patient that is lying down all tied to machines. Then you heard the beep, 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 beep. If you don't, so there is a data in there. And if you don't make a decision within this one minute, you could lose a patient, right? And another, uh, another example of um, data that lasts forever. Uh, so let's say that um, in uh, COVID, COVID is going to last for six, seven months, seven years before it dies. So any information about COVID is going to last forever. So the data has a life uh, lifespan different. There is a data that lasts for, for a second, then it dies, valueless. So once the patient then, um, is gone, you don't care about that beep beep anymore. So it's dead. We cannot use it. It's too late to use it. So the, the, the life of the model is related to the life of the data. The moment 
the, the, the moment your data changes or the assumptions of your data changes, that is the moment that you need as either technical data scientists or uh, citizen data scientists, you need to jump in and take out that model from production and replace it with an, an, another model. Otherwise, it is going to be all garbage, garbage, garbage. So the model was not designed on that data. It is designed on different data. The moment it, the assumptions of the data changes, the model dies. Is it is a good practice to build in uh, validation in, within your model? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the model that we deploy into production is called winner model. But at the same time, we, we cannot wait until something happens, until the model breaks. So we are going to build simultaneously a model. So let's say that the mod, we put a mod into production today. And we got 500,000 gigabyte of data today. We are going to use that 500,000 gigabyte. For example, I'm just giving you a number just for simplicity. We are going to add it to the historical data and build in a new model. And tomorrow, we are going to take tomorrow's data, add it. The following data, every time we, we acquire, we generate data, we are going to use that data, dump into historical data, and keep building a model. The model we are building while we have a model into production, it's called challenger model. The moment we see the winner model, which is live, is performing badly, we are going to substitute right within one click. We are going to make the challenger now the winner, and we are going to expire. We are going to retire the uh, winner model and repeat in the process. So we can now wait until something happens. And uh, so especially if you need if you need the model to make a to make decision on a fly, if you have a model, if you decide to retire a model, then you have to wait months before you have a new model. So you have to continuously build models as the the data comes in, and while the model is the win as much as in, uh, is the win as supposed to uh, live. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, please hold on, brother. Welcome, salam alaikum. Please hold on. Let's make sure that brother who asked the question is clear. Thank you. Yes, very clear. Appreciate Good. It. Okay, brother. Salam. Say salam alaikum. What is your question? Uh, I have a question regarding the data preparation. Sure. In this uh, step, where we um, all the unstructured or any data which is not uh, usable, and then we are making that data meaningful or useful for the data model development, isn't that part uh, data preparation is part of a data engineer uh, scope? Data engineer, and, uh, yeah. Data in, their job of their data engineer is to give you the data. So they uh, they uh, manage to store your data. They brought you the data you are looking for. And by the way, you are not using all the data being generated within the company. You are going to use the data needed for that specific problem. And the, the data engineers, they are the one who designed the data. They designed the databases. They designed the, the, the queries, the, 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 the databases. They designed the servers. They designed everything for you. They, they design the storage. So once they get they pass the data to you, either straight or through ATL, and of course now you have the data. The data is a garbage at this point of time. So you need to prepare it, pre-process it to fit into the model that you'll be using. Data preparation is your job, not data engineering's job. It could be in some cases that data engineers, they are helping with data preparation, but it's totally your responsibility as data scientists. Got it. Thank you. Good. I have a quick yes, question. Mom. Yes, sir. So, like, the, is there a possible way we can keep updating or upgrading our data instead of uh, building a newer model every time? So, if you update your data, then you need to train your model again. I cannot, if I, you... if I train you today, let's say that I'm teaching Arabic. Okay, I'm teaching okay. Arabic. So I'm, I'm training you in Arabic. Every day I'm teaching you Arabic because I want to send you to Mexico to represent me. Every day Arabic, 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 Arabic. 
So you are going to do a better job just if I train you in Arabic and I send you to uh, to uh, Mexico to, to teach Arabic to someone who does not speak Arabic. What in if... Mexico or Morocco? In, um, uh, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. So let's say to Morocco, <laughs> Arabic. So let's say that instead of training you in Arabic, you know, to, I trained you to today in Arabic, then I simply said, man, I forgot to teach you something about French. Then, then French, Arabic, then instead, tomorrow, next day, I'm doing French, Arabic, English, English, Arabic, French. Then how much you are think you are going to present me teaching Arabic to Mexican? It's going to be very, you know, your, 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 uh, uh, your um, uh, what do you call it? Your performance is going to be very low. Why is that? Because I keep training you and a different data. So I have to stabilize my data first. If, to get the best learning, to, to, to get the best pattern out of that data, we have to stabilize the data. If the data keeps changing, of course, um, you are not going to learn. We need to stabilize it. And while stabilized, we are going to we are going to simply learn the patterns, and that patterns is what we call the machine learning. Okay, brother. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. I have a question, sir, Mohammed. Yes, sir. Uh, um, earlier you were saying you will select five people of us, you know. So is that for example or this just... Uh, you yes. will... we, have, we have 136, for example, we have 136 algorithms. I am not going to train uh -huh. all. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna try 50. And uh -huh. out of those 50, five of them, they are the best performance. For uh -huh. best with best in performance, and out of these five, we are gonna need only one to place in the production. Okay, so if I train, you know, sixty students, sixty participants on data science, for example, and they want to send you um, to North Africa to teach data science, I'm not. I don't have a budget to send you off. I'm gonna train you and keep training you, and every one of you has a way to learn. You are different in a way to learn. And that is what makes models different. Models, they have many models. They learn, but they have different, they, they are different in the way they learn. It's similar to you guys. You are going to learn from the program, but any one of you has a unique method of learning. Models or algorithms, they have unique method of learning. So I'm going to train you as my algorithms. So you are algorithms. You have living algorithms. I'm going to train you on data science. And I'm going to test you. So when I test you out of these 50, 60 students, I'm going to grab the last 10, the most 10 influencers, or the, better, the best 10 uh, algorithms. And out of these 10, I'm going to try to improve you all. But at the end of the day, I'm going to pick only one algorithm or one person who is the best, who is doing better. And I'm going to send that one person to Africa to teach data science. And that is what's going to happen to models. We got many models. We are going to pick the models based on the problem that we are we have in place uh, in front of us, and we are based on the data that we have. So we are going to train a few models. We are going to test these models. We are going to pick the best model. We are going to optimize it, tune it, and use it for production. We are not going to use all models. We are going to use only one model. But to get to this one model, we have to try, try many models. We have to test many models before we make a decision which model is better. Clear? Yeah, yes, but you know the that means you are saying after completion of this uh, course, you will hold exam kind of, you know, the like, you know, to evaluate, you know, the how we are, you no know, problem, going. I mean, I'm simply giving an example of what is what is the model. Oh, okay. It's nothing to do with with you guys. Nothing to do with the the, the exam or not nothing to do with certificate. Simply, I'm trying to demonstrate how these models are trained. Oh, okay. And they take it, it as an example. Okay. You got it. Nothing to do with yes. you. You are simply an example explaining these algorithms. Uh -huh. okay. Yes. Good. Okay, Riaz, I know you had the question. Yeah, so so um, 
uh, in these different activities um, uh, what will be like you know for example the data acquisition data um, uh, explanation right uh, exploration sorry and then data so all of these different activities what person like how much will be the data scientist involvement um, or does it start from actual once the data is normalized from there um, so um, in starts? your team in your team you have three expertise we have people with three expertise you could have 20 you could have 500 members i know it's too much but in terms of the quality you are gonna have three expertise within your team the domain expert the data expert as you your presence should be across the clock and the presence or the influence of the main experts probably is going to be in the first phase the presence and the uh, the needed for data expert should be in the data acquisition and data explore exploration their mind is you the data problem understanding data acquisition data exploring data preparation is more than 80 percent of the entire project so you'll be spending 80 percent simply understanding the problem acquiring exploring and preparing the data building a solution is a piece of cake anyone can do it's 10 20 percent of the entire pro project so your presence is always there your participation probably starts with data your hands on dirty hands probably starts with data exploration but still you need to build with your team we need to spend time understanding the problem and acquiring the data understanding the data clear yeah thank you yeah welcome let's proceed so i'm going to skip uh, skip this career in data science and I'm going to stop here. I promise I'm going to stop here. So to become a superhero data scientist, you are going to need five ingredients that I personally developed through my six years of teaching data science to um, university sectors, you know, corporate, uh, you know, individuals. You are going to need number one, a domain expertise. And what I mean by that, if you have any domain expertise, please stay with it. Just stay. If you are, uh, if you are, if you are working in healthcare, stay there. If you are in sales, finance, IT management, just name the discipline. Stay where you are. Stay. Keep doing what you know to what you you, you are familiar with, and add analytics in the top of it. So if you are in healthcare, making hundred thousand. If you were to add analytics, you should be making at least 160,000. So 60,000, 20,000 to 60,000 would be should be added the moment you add analytics to your plate. Number two, you are gonna need to be familiar with one programming language, either R or Python, but I would start with Python because it's an easy and high demand and dominant programming language. You don't have to be an expert. So just learn Python for data science. And we do offer training programs in Python for data science. And as a matter of fact, there is a program coming up soon. It's a SQL for data science and data visualization. It's a great program. And they believe the business is selling it for $5.99. Yeah, we'll, we'll share this information for those who are interested. Of course, if you want to um, educate yourself, I think we have a solutions for you. Then you need to know some statistics, some uh, probability. You don't have to be an expert, but at least you need to know how to measure the position of your data, how to measure the, the dispersion, the shape, the relationship, how to apply some mean, median, mode, variance, some statistical analysis, covariance, correlation, uh, ANOVA, MANOVA, hypothesis testing, normal distribution, binomial, Poisson distribution, conditional probability some of the few things to help you simply to simply help you understand the bias understand the sampling understand the probability understand the value of your data that is very important number four 
you need to have, you need to start speaking the data science language, not data science programming language, data science language. So you need to be familiar with the big words, with terminology, and it's called lingo. So these are some of the lingos that we are going to learn through the program. Decision tree, random forest, what is data science, entropy, data split, modeling, training seed, testing seed, target variable, classification, regression. There are some of the big words. When I started my journey, I started with learning these terminologies aloud. I simply speak them out loud in the matter. My family, my kids, they think I'm crazy, but I know what I was doing. Just speak them aloud. What is that? What is decision tree? Decision tree is this and this and this. We are using it to do this and this and this. What is the present cause? What is the characteristic? Something that you need to know, and we are going to learn it, and you need to speak it aloud. And finally, and this is very important, I need to know what value you are bringing to my business if I were to hire you. In other words, I need to see some project in your resume. If you are trying to find a job without a project in your resume, you are wasting your time. You are not going to get it. And finally, thank you so much for being part of this program. Hopefully, inshallah, you have a clue of what is data science. And I'm going to open the floor to questions uh, if you have any question or concern. Assalamu alaikum, brother Mo. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. My name is Fahim. I just want to make a statement. I don't have any question at the moment. I just want to state that uh, uh, my previous experience at my previous company, and, and this is why um, it is making me learn and acquire more skills, is because uh, I just want to share something for the whole group. So uh, in my previous job, I was working as, as something that you were doing back in 2014. Uh, a person between the IT and the business. And uh, one time I was told that, oh, uh, Fahim, what's going to happen is that uh, you're going to be taking over five people's job because we just find them to be dinosaurs. And uh, <laughs> that that actually, that experience made me to believe, oh, if these people are dinosaurs now of doing what they were doing for 20 years, then I'm going to be a dinosaur. That is true. So, so just wanted to say that thank you for sharing your experience and it's actually very uh, motivating. Thank you. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome. Other questions, please? Yeah, uh, this is Asad uh, Zaki. Uh, the, uh, the, you, you mentioned some new uh, data science jobs being trainers, explainers, and sustainers. Uh, is there, are those larger buckets that you that you're putting things in, or or are there much more? Yeah, other... much, that is simply in nature. We are going. I mean, data science is creating jobs. That is the point. But data science is consuming jobs at the same time. Right, right, right. So okay. you have to learn data science to avoid being in that in that one extreme and to be in that one extreme, to avoid being a victim and to increase your chance to land your job of your dream. Okay, okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, folks, other questions, concerns, uh, please speak out, and otherwise, I am going to dismiss you. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I have a question. So by the end of this course, uh, are we going to be able to, like, apply for a job or, like, at least, you know, is there, like, a lease job we can get? like from a company? Honestly, honestly, this program is not designed to lend you the job uh, of your dream. But yes, if if you put effort, you should be familiar with the process. You should be familiar with some basics and you should be able to start looking for a job. Are you going to okay. get a job or no? I have no idea. But okay. it's going to be your jump start to uh, to to get in, in, the, in, that, in that corner or in that, uh, not to land the job of your dream. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Um, welcome my name is Mir. I just wanted to ask a question. Um, I currently work in a field where we are going in the path of automation and uh, collecting our data and 
process, trying to process it in a more um, automated way. And we're, we're trying to create uh, metrics and everything by learning Python, by learning this and understanding how a data scientist um, works and everything. And through this um, course, would we be able, would I be able to utilize this knowledge and then implement it in by the end of the year, or by next year, incorporating the creation of a metrics program based on structured data and unstructured data that I'm getting from my field. So there are two things, brother. Uh, number one, um, learn data science not to get a job. Learn data science to avoid being a victim, number one, and learn data science to increase your chance of getting a better job. The jobs are there. Jobs, there are millions of jobs are there waiting for skilled people like you. Are you going to utilize what you are going to learn? Yes. Now, whatever you will learn from this program, if you were to invest time-wise and effort-wise, I promise you, you are going to see it useful. You are going to see your life much better in thinking about a problem from different corners, the different perspective than what you used to. You are going to use what you are going to learn from this program knowledge-wise and experience-wise to tackle any business problems later any business problem related to data later. And of course, just why I want to mention this, this is not gonna be enough. This is simply a taste. This program is a taste. So you really need to invest. Once you complete the program, there is a lot of YouTube channels you can learn from, you go to Udemy, you know, Coursera, other service provider. Take our program, I really don't have a problem or reach out to me, I will more than happy to uh, provide some books, some um, information and guidelines and roadmap to help you start your own journey, on a journey on your own. At the end of the day, I really don't care how you are gonna do it, but you have to do it. You have to do it. That is- Yes. Thank you, thank you, JazakAllah. Okay, folks, that's it for tonight. Thank you so much for being part of this program. Hopefully you uh, uh, you learned something and uh, I would be more than happy to address any concerns or doubt through the WhatsApp groups that we have. Uh, if you don't have access to a draw to a canvas, please reach out to me or reach out to um, your uh, register and um, then we are gonna fix it. So I'm going to, we'll see you guys next weekend, uh, next uh, next Friday, inshallah. That is going to be our next session. Uh, we might change, we might change the timing and I will let, let you know ahead of time. Most likely we are going to do it twice a week because we want to finish Friday before Ramadan. Okay, folks, that's Brother it. Brother right. Yes, sir. Uh, I mentioned like I started downloading the uh your brother just stay uh, stay after the class then i'll help you okay folks no, it, the download is complete just wanted to let you know okay the yeah. anaconda yeah thank you that was completed so i wanted to know i just wanted to let you know because i don't want your time to be no problem brother yeah, I'm, I'm willing to help you if, if okay folks that's it for tonight i'll see you guys next weekend until then you guys have a great evening great weekends and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye. Wa alaikum assalam.